Hello everyone, my name is Mad Video DX UK, and this is a video where I'm talking about the Mini SI4732 radio uh, by doing a, an ownership uh, review after a few months of owning this radio. Now, if you don't want to see the whole video, let me summarize it in short. It is an excellent radio, I like it, very surprising how well it performs for the price, even though it does have a few flaws. Uh, alternatives for best cheapest radios, the more expensive than this one, uh, but not that much expensive, are the Texan PL330 for around 50 to 60 British pounds, convert that to your local currency, and the XH Data or Siwadon DA to weight for around uh, 60 to 70 uh, British uh, pounds. Personally, I recommend the uh, XH Data or Suadun D808 because it's got features that the Texan PL330 doesn't have, like RDS for the FM band and also the air band. For FM DXing, I recommend any of the TF6686 uh, radios, lots of different models available with that chip. Um, and also, um, something else to bear in mind that you might think this looks like a toy, some people have said. It is a toy, but let me tell you, when you know how to use this properly, it isn't a toy. It can be as good as any other radio. Okay then, so the long part now, let's start off with the pros. The first pro is that how well this radio works for its price. You know, I expected a, a low performer, but actually it is a very good performer indeed for, you know, between 20 to 30 British pounds you get this for. I think this radio is a steal. The second pro is that reception is very good on FM, medium wave, short, you know, short wave and long wave, thanks to the, you know, the SI4732 chip, although long wave is a bit on the low side, um, though it still can receive signals anyway on the long wave band. If you're into long wave DXing, I highly recommend getting the Codeson DX286. I've got it and, it, you know, it's an excellent uh, portable for long wave uh, DXing. Another pro about this uh, radio is uh, its size. It's very portable. It fits into all pockets I have, even with this extended whip antenna that I have, and it is also very light. By the way, um, this one here is not the uh, the stock one that comes with the radio. It's um, one that uh, I had for one of my other radios. Um, it's longer and it does better than the, the one that came with uh, this radio originally because the one that came with this radio originally was too short in my opinion. This one is longer and it gets uh, better signals than the shorter one uh, than uh, I had. Uh, by the way, if you do want to get uh, an extended whip antenna for this radio, make sure the connection is an SMA one because this radio takes an SMA um, connections, otherwise you'll have to use um, adapters. Another pro, uh, pro about this radio is the build quality is, um, it's good, it's actually very good. It does feel like a 3D printed object, especially those you buy off eBay. For example, when I bought adapters and all that, I can tell it's from a three, you know, 3D printed uh, machine because <clears throat> they use hard plastic, this uses hard plastic um, as well. But so far, no cosmetic damage or bits or plastic or, you know, or any parts are peeling off uh, either. The screen is intact and it's fine. The tuning button is, abso is absolutely fine too. Also, this button is used for uh, you know menu selection features, and also the antenna connection is fine too. So everything of this radio is still um, intact, um, and the build quality I do rate it. Okay then, uh, another pro about this radio is that it has single sideband mode capability available for such a cheap price. If, you know, in the past this would have been unthinkable or a dream just to uh, have single sideband mode capability on a radio for the price that it sells. But now finally, for those that say, oh, this radio for, you know, that, that costs 20 or 30 uh, pounds, it has no SSB. Well, finally, you've got a radio here for that price. It has single sideband, so you can't complain about that. All right, so uh, there you are. And this goes to for the people that say, oh, 60, 70 pounds for a radio that has single sideband is too expensive. Well, I, I don't know what to make of that, but finally, for half the price, you can get a radio with single sideband mode capability. Get this one, okay? Right. Another pro is that the battery life of this radio is very decent. It holds battery charge very well after not being used for a long time. Um, does not seem to discharge very quickly like other radios I own. I cannot tell you exactly the battery life uh, of this uh, radio as it depends how it's used, everyone uses it differently. But all I can say is no complaints and I'm likely to use this on a, you know, almost an entire uh, afternoon or evening without the battery life running out after a full charge. Another pro is that it works very well with a loop antenna, for example, the MLA30 antenna that I've got. In fact, I think it works better with the loop antenna versus the internal whip antenna. Um, great for those that can only DX at home, for example, and have access to a MLA30, which I highly recommend as an indoor or home antenna. The MLA30 would use for uh, things like the medium wave, 
long wave and uh, short wave bands you can connect an fm antenna to it like for example i've connected my outdoor fm antenna to this and it works really well too so there we are this is great you know this you know this has really surprised me about this radio how well it takes external um, antennas another pro about this radio is the screen brightness uh, display is fine does okay outdoors in bright sunshine but it may need to be turned up to uh, maximum uh, brightness letting you know Another pro about this radio is the one button navigation because it only has one button. It doesn't have touch screen capability. It doesn't have a keypad. Um, it's fine. Um, but uh, what I recommend uh, is to install a better firmware on this radio because the custom one, the user interface is not very good. The menu selection is very fiddly. But once I installed a custom firmware, it is absolutely uh, fine. Um, so what I'll do is I leave a link in the description below uh, a tutorial for those interested in getting this radio, how to install the custom firmware or any uh, custom firmware on this uh, radio. But there's some things I want to point out in the cons um, about installing firmware on this radio um, as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Another pro about this radio is tuning frequencies is nice and accurate. Uh, no going past frequencies, for example, when tuning around very quickly. The tuning dial is very solid as well, so can't complain about that. Another pro about this radio is that it has very little overload. I've experienced with the whip antenna, um, at least in my experience, um, or hardly any overload. I don't think I've come up, come up against uh, any overload with the whip antenna. Um, using uh, the MLA30, I did come across some overload, but it was the same with my other radios. So there's nothing to worry about. This radio does really well with coping with the uh, overload, but you may have to adjust the AGC, the automatic gain control in the menu, if it's if you've got it available with your, you know, in the firmware version that you have. Okay. And also I had to adjust it as well when I had my external FM antenna connected to it. Um, once I adjusted the AGC, it was absolutely fine. Uh, no, uh, I would say no signal uh, overload. Another pro about this uh, radio um, is that it uses an SMA connection, like I said, for internal and external antennas that use SMA for compatib uh, compatibility, but also to re uh, reduce um, signal loss. But if not, you know, if you have uh, an antenna connection that doesn't use SMA, you, of course you can use adapters as well. Um, no signal loss that I've noticed, um, even though scientifically they say, oh, if you use certain adapters, you'll get signal loss. Well, I've never experienced it with this radio or other radios that um, I've uh, used. It's only when, for example, if you um, tune on frequencies two gigahertz and above, maybe you might experience signal loss with anything other than SMA um, connections. Another pro about this radio, it has great intelligibility, um, even for a small speaker and in all modes as well. Um, also, what really stands out for me is the single sideband mode. It sounds so clear. Uh, the intelligibility is uh, great. And uh, yeah, it's got that punchy sound to it. Um, you know, really surprised me again. So great for, you know, for its price. So yeah, this is a nice single si sideband mode uh, receiver as well. Uh, another pro about this radio is that it's got a great selection of features. Um, of course, it depends on the firmware you've got installed. But if you've got custom firmware like mine, you'll have access to things like bandwidth filters, the AGC automatic gain control, tuning steps, soft mute uh, removal, um, uh, and so on. Um, I have not compared the features of the stock firmware versus the custom firmware, like for example, of mine. Um, but um, all I can say is that if some features are mentioned, are not in the uh, stock firmware that you have when you uh, when you've just got the radio it's best to install the custom firmware to give it those extra features and it is really worth it okay then so let's move on to the cons the uh, first one is that the stock firmware on this radio at least the one i got when i when i bought it first time it's not very intuitive the user interface and easy to navigate uh, such as make, making menu selections and tuning which can be very fiddly i rec do recommend in you know installing custom firmware like i said i'll leave a link in the description below um about uh you know installing custom firmware on these uh, mini si4732 uh, radios something else to another con about this radio it's more to do with the fact that there are different models and revisions out there so there are different versions of this uh, mini SI4732 radio available out there, but they are not specified. That's a problem. They don't specify certain things. Like, for example, mine has an inverted screen. If I try to install firmware for non-inverted screens, then the display, you know, the display looks reversed or inverted. I will leave a link in the description below of a firmware available for inverted screens in case you happen to get a mini SI4732 radio like mine, which has the inverted uh, screen. 
Also, there are different versions of this radio with the, uh, for example, some have the 8 megabyte board, others have the 60 megabyte board. And this has led people trying to install the wrong firmware on their mini SI4732 radios. For example, they flash the firmware of the 60 megabyte board onto the ones with the 8 megabyte board because they don't know. They don't know that the radio has an 8 megabyte board. The only way you can find out is use. Um, I can't remember the name of the software. You plug it into your uh, computer by USB and it'll tell you uh, which uh, radio, which board is inside the radio. Okay, so when you buy it off AliExpress, eBay and so on, it's just going to say Mini SI4732 radio, for example. They might not say this is the 8 megabyte version, this is a 16 megabyte version, this, this one has an inverted screen. None of that, because when I got this radio, it did not say that it has an inverted screen. Okay, so just uh, letting you know. So in the end, it's going to be luck of the draw. Um, unless you ask the seller and by chance they happen to know which version of the mini SI4732 radio uh, they are selling okay right so next con is that this radio gets some noise on some frequencies when using the internal uh, whip antenna it seems the radio lacks protection against electrical noise caused by the electronics inside inside like for example the screen itself i was using this radio the other day and it was producing some like sound clipping um when the battery level here on the top right uh, of the radio i don't know if you can see it here uh, on camera it was changing so every time it changed it made that um clipping sound um to resolve this issue um the best thing to do is to use a grounded antenna like for example the mla30 loop antenna which will reduce that noise. The only thing is, if you're going to use this portable, you're not going to take your MLA30 antenna with you out and about uh, because it's not very portable, is it? It's okay if, for example, if you're stationary, you're going to take it for outdoor DXing and you're stationary. But for moving out and about, like I usually do with this radio, yeah, it's not very practical taking that MLA30 antenna. You're going to, you're going to look a bit weird, you know, um, if you, you're carrying your MLA30 with you at all times. So that's a shame about um, this radio. So hopefully, if they do make another mini SI4732 radio um, revision or model, hopefully it will um, reduce further. They'll do something to reduce further the effects of the noise going into the uh, from the radio itself, the inside into uh, the whip um, antenna. But at least with a grounded light antenna, like I said, the MLA30, it works a lot better and you, you hardly get that uh, noise issue. Another con about this radio is that the volume is on is on the low side. It's not that low, but it's a bit low. Um, could do with a bit more uh, volume. I have to set mine to the maximum volume, uh, which is uh, volume 63 setting on this uh, radio I have. There is an improved version of this radio, which Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango reviewed a while back on his channel, and that has stronger and better audio output. I will leave a link in the description below of that video itself if you're interested. I don't have that version of the radio, by the way. I have this one, which is like the original Mini SI4732 uh, radio. Another con is for those that uh, prefer keypads on the on this radio. Well, this one doesn't have a keypad, right? So if you have to have a keypad on a radio itself for tuning around and all that, maybe it's best to avoid this one. Also, it doesn't have a touch screen either, but if it did have a, a touch screen, um, then this radio, I'm sure, would be uh, more expensive. Um, so the only way you can change frequencies and all that is, of course, this one button only and uh, that's it. Um, so just uh, just bear that in mind. And uh, another con, um, the final one I can think of, is that the display can be... Sp well, it's a, it is a small display. Um, and the thing is, for those with not such a great vision, in, you know, it will be hard or it could be hard for them to see, um, you know, uh, to read... Uh, the data on the or the information available on the uh, screen itself. At least the frequency display um, is fine. Um, you know, it's the, the text is large itself or the font, uh, but everything else, like for example, this here on the left, it looks quite small, doesn't it? Uh, so people with not so great vision will struggle. I myself, I have to use uh, reading glasses um, to read. So um, yeah, so I mean, I can st I can do okay without the glasses, but other people may do worse, right? So my recommendation is that if you need glasses to see small text, well, you're gonna have to use it to use this uh, radio, by the way, okay? All right then, so to summarize, do I like this radio? I do like it indeed. It is very surprising how well it performs for its price, uh, works better, and maybe as intended 
when used with the MLA30 antenna or any other decent antenna, a grounded antenna, I should say, um, because um, with this uh, whip antenna, unfortunately, it gets some noise coming from the inside of the, you know, of the uh, radio. Um, so there. Um, and also as well is that I'm also taking this radio outdoors regularly with me because of how light and portable it is and also the for, its, for you know for its performance and uh, features uh, too it's a shame about the volume up output is a bit on the low side which by the way if you connect an external source it does a bit better but it's still a bit low uh, too by the way okay so just to let you know on that but at least it has a 3.5 millimeter jack here as you can see so you can connect an external speaker for a bit better sound or better sound by the way like for example when i connect my bluetooth uh, speaker um, to it so um there but would I recommend this uh, radio? I would recommend it for its price. It's a no-brainer for 20 to 30 British pounds. Would it be your only radio? In my opinion, not really. Um, if you uh, are a shortwave DX or listener, you like to listen, listen to shortwave signals regularly and all that, I consider it a complementary radio. Have it alongside your Texan, your XH data, and so, so on. If it's gonna be your only radio, well, Maybe it's all right here. Yeah. Maybe it'll do as your only radio, especially for those that don't spend more than thirty pounds um, on a radio itself. But in the end, I think this should complement other radios in your collection, even if you have just one other radio um, as uh, well. Um, it might be a bit hard for beginners to use this radio, but I don't think it's that hard. But all I can say is that if you are considering this uh, radio for the price. And maybe if I scared you a little by saying, you know, I wouldn't recommend this radio for beginners. Look, we all have to start somewhere. OK, and you will get used to it uh, after a while. So this radio is not, um, you know, UI unfriendly. I would say this radio is user interface friendly, but I do recommend, like I said, installing custom firmware on this radio to uh, make it better. And don't look, let the looks deceive you, um, you know, as if to say, oh, this looks like a toy and that's it. Like I said, when I've used this with external antennas like my MLA30 antenna and my FM external antenna, this comes, you know, it, it comes to life. It, it sort of like works a lot better than I expected. Okay then, so thank you very much for watching.